Fredo is the daft of the Football Daft podcast. Is that a good story? Is that a good story? I've got an encyclopedia. Brain. He's got a damn man nothing. <laughs> Fuck sake. What are you, a fucking hoo? <laughs> this is Football Daft. You're a Rangers man. Aye. I'm a Hearts man. <laughs> With you and Cameron. I work for Showtime in ESPN. <laughs> and. Be the top end of Stevenson. Grado! It's the Football Dad podcast with you and Grado. Hello there, Grado. Happening, mate. You, you all right, buddy? Uh, you've been a busy, busy boy. You've been working on an ITV drama. You've been up and down to London. How's it going? Oh, uh, grafting. 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 Mm-hmm. Yesterday I sat in a trailer, mate. I got there at 12 pm and I was in a trailer. For nine hours. Staying what? More or less picking my hoop. But by the way, when I say that, right, I'm watching this episode back for last week. Uh-huh. Who is it that edits this YouTube? Because the first thing that came up on that show last week was me scratching my buzz on the YouTube video. And? But you always do that. I bet. You constantly scratch yourself. Shell Suit Bob does the same for some reason. I don't know why. The, I, Stephen Bob. Purden scratches his balls. I'm always pulling him up for it. And... So if you I look like a big hypocrite. I look like a big hypocrite because the first thing when when folk open this YouTube is me taking a hook at my boss. Why would you? Whoever is it you that hold does it? Hold on, it, a, hold on, hold on a wee minute, right? What? So there's a video that goes along with this show, right? But I will, you know, you know but I that there's not. Well, hold on, a, <laughs> let me just finish. You know there are video cameras filming everything that we do. Aye, correct. That's why I'm wearing black the day and all that. Right, to make yourself look slimmer. Aye, right. Well, but your face. Ain't help on your face. <laughs> anyway, so there you are. You're on YouTube. You know it. You're on video camera. Uh, what are you scratching? Well, I just have a itchy buzz. You can get something for that. You don't have to continually scratch Funnily yourself. Funnily enough, you can because I have been on, remember I said I've been on a Dragon's Den binge. There was a guy trying to sell um, <laughs> these wipes for your buzz. Right, he, he gets slaughtered. Wipes. I. It was something. It was something like um, fellas, fella wipes. Right, fella wipes. Fella wipes. Right, that's what he was trying to sell. <laughs> I hang. You can wipe your boys. When I went, and he was getting, you know, Duncan Bant. Everyone, I'm out. I was like, I'm in, mate. I want a buck at him. <laughs> Would you've invested? <laughs> I would have it. And what mate. was the purpose for the fella wipes? Well, if you've to t- 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 clean your buzz. But you do that when you're in the shower. I know, but th- th- this was specifically... I-, I like my accessories. You know, I like my coconut oil. Mm-hmm. I like all my wee bits and bobs. I like... Yeah, yeah. So I-, I know that, I know that. Uh, I, so uh-huh. I just thought it was... I just thought it would have been... I- I'd like a packet of fellas. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> but, come on, man. This has been stressful this week because... It has been a stressful because week. It's been a stressful week because we had a guest today... Uh-huh. Who, the, who is going to be the, the biggest guest that we've ever had. He's going to come on you next week. You can't say that with the people we've had on because the people... No, 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 no. This one's going to blow it out of the water and I don't care what you say. He was meant to be on the show today and the right. reason he's not on the show today is because <laughs> you screwed up. And you screwed up because you were filming an ITV drama. Ooh, look at me filming an ITV drama. And this is a Scotland international footballer who's played with Rangers, who's played with Wolverhampton Wanderers, who's played with Celtic, Celtic. and played with Hebs, who was going to come into the studio and sit with us for an hour and have a bit of a laugh, a Mm. bit of fun. It was all planned for the day at half past one, and you said, I can't do it because I'm in an ITV drama. Right. I had to conduct an interview with Tony Watt. You weren't there. Who were you away to see? Are you having a pot? Wait, wait, the wait. The birds of a feather. What's her name? <laughs> Leslie fucking what? Leslie Grantham. <laughs> Leslie what? What's well, Leslie name? Grantham is from EastEnders. Right, Leslie who? See, before we, See, get, I'm just, I'm just see saying, before we get to the to the, the reason why I was not involved in the Tony Watt interview that you did, aye. right? It's because there was a I timing struggle, issue. I struggle, by the way. I don't know how to deal with that shit. Right. I, there was a timing issue with the Tony Watt interview. Did you know... That he was in Bulgaria? No, I thought he was in here because I'm going, he needs to go wait at Ford Bells for his training. I'm going, he plays for CSK Sofia. I'm going, how's he going to get a train for fucking Glasgow Green? I'm going, he's like, I, I turned up and I'm like, that was Tony. That's <laughs> <laughs> on FaceTime. I went, oh, that makes sense. Right. So I didn't know that he was in Bulgaria. I thought that Tony Watt was in Belgium. <laughs> Gredo thought he was in Glasgow Green. So when I was told that Tony Watt was available 
TV interviewed at 12 o'clock, I thought, oh, you're a dancer. That we can interview him at 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But there's a two-hour time difference between here and Bulgaria. <laughs> his 12 o'clock is he's two... He's my brain, mate. His 12 o'clock is two o'clock. And he couldn't do it. But <laughs> you're still going to wait to see the fucking the one for Birds of a Feather that need the likes. <laughs> it's Susie Quirk. She's the best one. So I, I, <laughs> right? Pauline. Pauline So it Quirk. turns out, because of the time difference between here and Bulgaria that I screwed up with that you didn't know about, I missed interviewing Tony Watt that you did. And the reason I missed doing Tony Watt is because I'd also scheduled an interview for my radio show with Leslie Joseph. That's it. From Birds Leslie of a Joseph. Feather. Birds I also had to interview the two women from Shakespeare's Stay sister. with me. So I had to interview Marcella and Siobhan <laughs> ahead of their comeback tour across the UK. You turned down Tony Watt for Marcella and Siobhan. <laughs> And Leslie Joseph. <laughs> Leslie Joseph. Mate, we've both made a cunt here. <laughs> <laughs> it's now time for Strip for Grado. This is where we find out what strips you've been sending into Grado to decorate our little man cave studio. <laughs> what have we got? Well, I've got the tidy um, last year's Falkirk away strip. Lewis, he's a mega, mega wrestling fan, right? And he turned up with a poly bag with about 40 Falkirk taps. <laughs> For me, and I was like, I don't need all that, mate. I'll just take, I'll just, I'll just take one or two. So we've got this one. It's a lovely yellow Puma uh, Falkirk tap for last year. Um, the team that failed last year. The team year. that failed. Oh, the <laughs> team that got actually relegated and from the championship to League One. I've just actually realised producer John in the studio. He's a Falkirk fan, isn't he? I basically say that often. Yeah, yeah. You, you hide. I, I just burn that one for. <laughs> That, that, that strip's not a good strip because oh. it, it brings back so many bad memories. That's not going up. That's why Lewis has given it to you because it's, it's, it's just it's bad memories and it's, it's not great. Well... Do you like that strip? Uh, it's a yellow away strip for Falkirk. Would you wear that yourself, Grado? Well, Scott Arfield used to play for Falkirk, didn't he? Why does everything, <laughs> everything revolve around the Rangers? Everything. Every opportunity you get, you will find a Rangers connection. We're talking about Falkirk. We're talking about Lewis who gave you that strip. We're talking about them getting relegated to League One. I ask you, do you like the strip? And then you go, yeah, Scott Arfield used to play for them. <laughs> You're a prick. <laughs> And if you want to send the strip in, <laughs> you can do it on Twitter. Gradle's Rant. It's now time for Gradle to have a rant. What's on your mind this week, my friends? Mate, I know nothing about politics, man, but I'm getting a wee, getting a wee bit freaked out by this Brexit shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking, man. I'm actually freaking out now. We cannot leave Europe with a no, without a no deal. We need a deal. <laughs> I know this might sound weird, mate, but I honestly, and I, don't, I know I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but I'm getting a bit scared now. Scared oh, of what, Grado? What are you scared of? Mortgages getting up, <laughs> fish not getting delivered. <laughs> all the trucks, I was in the middle of the night, I'm, I'm seeing all these trucks, and I'm going, they're all coming in for Spain, all right? you know, sardines are getting coming into the country, cheeses, wines. This is all going to stop in less than a month. And it's not going to happen. You know what I mean? I just don't know. I'd never ever want to get into politics because, ma, oh, just I never want to talk about it. But so now I'm sitting to foot. I know it's a lot of shit. Everybody's keeping going on about Brexit, and they don't want to listen to the football daft man. But I was like to my mate last night. I goes, we can't have a no deal Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> He's going, what are you talking about? <laughs> who are who are you? Who are you? Shit, mate, I'm, are you know a bit about fear. No. I don't know, sometimes I think to myself, do you know what, see if we didn't have a Prime Minister, see if we didn't know who the Prime Minister was, you wouldn't notice a fucking difference, but I'm fit, man. I mean, that Boris Johnson get held a, a, a balloon and a knob the other day and he held it and just walked mate, by. And mate, that, that, was a, that wasn't real. Oh, was it? Someday, that, someone, that was an, an artist, a graphic designer, oh. who, who put a plastic <laughs> penis in his hand. Oh, you thought that was real. <laughs> You thought that Boris Johnson real. was walking around, was walking around the Tory Party conference <laughs> with a, an inflatable penis. You <laughs> thought that was real. real. You're thinking Boris Johnson is that daft. He did not know that he was holding a plastic penis. Mate, that was someone who was a graphic designer who what? put that in his hand. Do you know 2019 mate, technology and things that people can do with videos? Amazing, by uh, the way. Well, he was a good, 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 good designer because. <laughs> I'm sharing that with everybody. <laughs> so what's, what's your rant? <laughs> that fucking drill up the stair! 
try to record a podcast. Look at fucking Tony Watt. <laughs> It's now time to look back at last weekend's games in the Premiership and some of the big talking points. Grado's going to give us his analysis and his thoughts in one sentence. Uh, Hibs won, Celtic won. Your thoughts? Thank you, Kevin Clancy. <laughs> <laughs> I think, what, I think I mean, what, come on. I think what Grado's getting at there is that Celtic did have stolen wall penalties. Oh, aye. And, and I just knew... Uh, <laughs> It's, but, I mean, we got two penalties, but they were stone walls, but they were stone walls. I thought, oh, man. So is Kevin Clancy on your really, Christmas card list? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hamilton 2, Livingston 1. Oh, well, that was a surprise. Um, well, Livingston no winning one. No, but I remember they were. They were, yeah. Because they were on my cup in the battles. <laughs> Come on, Nick Nil, Ross County Nil. I'd rather sit in a house with Tufik. <laughs> Rangers 5, Aberdeen oh. nil. Thank you, Bobby Madden. <laughs> No, but seriously, Rangers played well. And a lot of people were saying Greg Stewart. Why did we sign Greg Stewart? That's exactly why you throw him in there. He had a great game, man of the match. He's what does he be... bring to your team? Well, he brings in, he knows the SPL, he can create, he can score, he can play in the Snyder pitches. He can... Do you think that it's he good. will be a key player for you as the season goes on? Particularly in December. Why December? It's a busy month, and we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> Christmas is coming, you know, panto season. <laughs> and I just think, mate, with, with, with injuries and suspensions... Right. So I good, good, squad player, good squad player, good squad player. Good squad player. Okay. Uh, St. Johnston nil, Motherwell won. Motherwell are having a good season. Motherwell are the team now. That's, Aye. That's... that's, that's um, They're the third best team yep, in Scotland yep, just yep, now. Yep. Uh, so, well done to the well, and we've got to say well done to the well, because the CEO of this company is a... What's is a his name? Steelman. Neil. Neil, uh huh. Do you like Neil? Aye, aye. He's got a lovely wee dog. Aye, he brings his dog in, doesn't he? He's a wrestling fan, too. Yeah. I said he's like wrestling. Aye, he likes right. wrestling. What does he prefer, wrestling or Motherwell? Wrestling. Is he a wrestling is he man, like, is yeah. he? He's a wrestling man. Anyway, well done to your Motherwell. Having a great season. I would I would love to have Robinson in charge at Tyne Castle. Really? Hold on a minute. Would yeah. you really? Aye. Is that who you would go for? That's 100% who is I'd go for. Is that who you would go for? Yeah, 100%. Robinson? I'd get Levine out the door tomorrow and put him in. I want the Motherwell manager at Tyne Castle. Uh, talking of um, Hearts, St Mirren nil, Hearts nil. Um, again, nightmare for Hearts, drawing away to one of the teams that are apparently one of the favourites to be relegated, but Hearts are down there as well. Uh, Craig Halkett off, could be out for the rest of the season with a real that serious injury. That's, that's possible. But then Livingston had a gold chopped, chopped off. Hey, sorry, St Mirren had a gold chopped off. They did, yes. It could have been, been, been worse for you. Anything you want to say on that? Hey... Uh... What? Levine must stay. <laughs> Levine must stay. <laughs> Levine must stay. It's good entertainment, mate. This is what it's all about. I know that you're. I know that you don't like Levine being in charge, but man, it's. it's this is what it's all about. Can I just remind you? What? November second. Is that when the game is? <laughs> what end are you sitting in? What, what end are you sitting in? What end am I sitting in? You're a cheeky prick. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you're on the wind up. What end am I sitting in? Fucking Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play, man. <laughs> Let's talk Scotland now. Stevie Clark has announced his squad for the Euro 2020 qualifiers against Russia and San Marino. The big surprise is the call-up of Dundee United striker. Lauren Shankland. He's banging in the goals. It's frustrating, Ewan, because... Why? I don't know if you know this, but I'm a Rangers fan, right? And uh, <laughs> I just feel, you know, it's in, the, it's in this, the, the, the press that Rangers are looking at him. For January. Right, but come on. He's at Dundee United now. They're not going to play ball with Rangers, are they? They are not going to play ball with Rangers. Uh, do you really think United, one, are going to sell him? And if they do, they're going to ask for a ridiculous fee now. Why did Rangers not take him in the summer? You'd exactly. go and play next to nothing. Exactly. Yeah. Ian McCall was in the press all day saying it was close to happening. I just don't get why it didn't happen. And it's funny, Super Ali said on the, 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 uh, he said in the media that Stevie Clark should pick him up and Stevie Clark done it. So do you think... He's been, Stevie Clark's been listening to Alan. What? Do you know what that was like? It was like somebody running out of batteries. <laughs> <laughs> Battery power just went. <laughs> <laughs> right, we put some batteries in Grado. What are you saying? Stevie Clark's taking a lot of advice with Super Alley. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
<laughs> but at the, but at the end of the day, mate, he's banging in goals, man. Some size of forehead, he's going to be uh, good in the box for heedles. <laughs> he's a goal scorer, man. Mate, you've no idea. This could be... Do you know what it reminds me? Uh-huh. Andy Robertson for rags to riches. Oh, it's it's stunning. It's it's, it's, oh, it's beautiful. It, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, John Fleck. I can't believe this is his Why? first call up. I, I do not get that. I do not get that. I understand. He's been brilliant for Sheffield United for a couple of seasons. And he's just not had a look in. Nah. I, I don't know why Big Eck didn't he? No. Nah. Because did Eck maybe work with him when he, he was, was a young boy? The Rangers, aye. It's, it's a funny one there, isn't it? John Fleck has been outstanding for Sheffield United um, and he's playing really well in the Premier League. he must be about fucking 42 now. He's only 29, I think. Is he? I know, it seems like he's been along a lot longer, aye, but aye. he's only 29. Now, I remember when he first burst onto the scene, he was, he was Scot- a guy. He was Scotland's Wayne Rooney. Yes. That yes. was what they were saying. And I remember at the time when Mark Burchill was around in the late 1990s, aye. he was Scotland's. Ronaldo? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Owen Aye That's right. what they were describing Mark Birchall as It didn't it's, turn out that way But it's the, it's the same way That um, we John Flett The wee, wee Billy was, was getting talked about Billy Gilmer Yeah now, but did you see says Fabregas oh, In the press Yes he's Saying that he's my He's the one Mate mate is that, that Everybody's sent, saying that sent that. chills down my spine And I've got a feeling That we Billy Will play against Man United In this Cabarara Cup The World Cup <laughs> No the Cabarro Cabarro I fucking call it the Cabaro. <laughs> Cabaro Cup. Carabao. Carabao. Carabao <laughs> Cup. <laughs> Shit. Do you know, think... Um, I tell you what, what was really interesting, Frank Lampard and what he said about Billy Gilmore, he waxed lyrical about him. I know. So he clearly... Because he... I mean, he's one of the best midfielders in world football in the last 20 plus years. Frank and Lampard. And he's saying that about Billy Gilmore. And I love it. How many times have we spoke to former footballers on this programme who said afterwards the best player they've seen... Come mm-hmm. through the ranks in recent years, Billy Gilmer. Well, Ian Durant, uh, he said that. Darren uh, Jackson uh, said it. Chris Common said it. Um, da- uh, as you say. Judith uh, Frouse. Judith Frouse. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it's just, it's brilliant, it's brilliant to see. Yes. And I hope he. I think I hope he gets put in against uh, Man United, mate. I don't know if he will. Should we talk Scotland? Aye, aye, Scotland. So the Scotland <clears> squad <throat> has been announced. Um, John Fleck, as we mentioned, Ollie Burke is back, who is on loan at Alaves. Uh, they've also been called up to replace the short arms from Matt Phillips and Stevie Smith. Now we got quite an interesting reaction on Twitter to the Scotland uh, squad announcement uh, from Big Dave. Guys like Fleck and Shanklin are a welcome addition. The squad's been stale for a while. Time for new blood. Ian Adam, we are humped for this campaign, which is correct. I agree with that, but this is about preparing for the big playoff matches in the Nations League next year. So why not punk guys like Hanley, Mulgrew and Russell and give the under-21 players a chance? There's a player in Hanley, and I know people are going to laugh at me for saying that. There is a player there. He doesn't get playing in the Premier League for Norwich if there's not a player there. I'm sorry. There's something there. He's a young centre back. Mm-hmm. You forget he's still learning his trade. Right. Mulgrew, I agree. I think Johnny Russell's got something to offer. I know he's playing in America, but he's got something to offer. It's just, mate, it's just, a, again, it's a frustrating situation because it just feels like there's nothing. Well, you've got a good squad, Grado. That's my point. We've got, on paper, we've got a better squad than Northern Ireland. Republic of Ireland and Wales take Bale out of that squad we've got a better squad than Wales as well but they're all outperforming us why? there's something fundamentally wrong Aye. we've got Ryan Fraser on the left that's flying for Bournemouth we've got James Forrest down the right that's flying for Celtic you've got a £20 million striker in Ollie McBurney you've got John McGinn who is being labelled as a £50 million midfielder for Man, Man United, United next year yep. do you know what I mean? so we've got Andy Robertson a Champions League winner at left back do you know what I mean? We've got the, we've got the, we've got Callum McGregor. We've got Callum McGregor. Right, let's talk about Who Knows Wins, which is the home of social betting and are changing the culture of gambling. Now, what we're going to do this week, we're actually going to set up our own little Who Knows Wins group on the app, so you need to go and download the app. Now, bookers have been taken out of the equation with this, and now you can get bets on sports against your mates. So it's you against your mates, and it can be winner takes all, you can have a prize fund where you can go to the top three. It's a lot of fun, it's a good laugh, and you get the opportunity to have a wee bit of bragging rights as well. It's a brilliant way to rake in the cash with your friends and getting it right up them whilst having a bit of banter along the way. Uh, there's no odds, there's no bookmakers. This is all about the prediction on sporting events. Uh, the more you know, the more that you will win. It's all with your pals. You are in control at all times. All you have to do to get involved in what me and Grado are setting up. We're going to right. put the links on Twitter. Right. We're going to put the links on Facebook. And all you need to do is download the app. Right. 
sign up to our little group. It's a five pound buy-in, winner takes all. So, so if there's a hundred people sign up, that's five. Is that five hundred quid? <laughs> five hundred quid. Aye. A winner takes all. But, so basically, predicting. Predicting. So you're basically saying that the punters can join our group and we'll join put our a fiver in. So we'll kick it off. But you do know that if we win, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to get to charity. <laughs> <laughs> And it's one of the things, man, isn't it? When you see uh, like a celebrity on Family Fortunes, man, they win 10 grand and they go, oh, I'm giving it to uh, the Blind Awareness Society and all that. And you think, no, you're, you want that money, don't you? So download the app at the App Store, which is the Apple App Store, or Google Play for more information. Visit their website, who knows whens.com. So we will put a link to the app and the group that me and Grado have set up on Twitter and Facebook. So make sure you go to our Football Daft Twitter account or our Facebook account account and um, get your predictions in and we're, should we do winner takes all or do you want to do first second and third for money um, i like a winner takes all aye, winner takes all mate come on 500 quid if we get 100 aye, people aye, in if we got 100 people in 500 pound i think that'd be good no, that will be good okay we'll do that so we're just going to set up a league whoever signs up buys in for a fiver puts their predictions in for the games at this weekend winner takes all so get involved now by downloading the app on uh, on the Apple Store or Google Play by typing in who knows wins. And what we're going to do, we're going to set up our league and it's going to be about the fixtures this weekend in the Scottish Premiership. Four games on Saturday, two games on Sunday. You just make your prediction and uh, get your entry fee in of a fiver. Winner takes all. Brilliant. It's the Football Daft Podcast. And you don't need to always keep saying it's the Football Daft Podcast. Oh, we did this last week, and right. you're asking me again. You don't understand how things work. I know this is not a radio show, but there are punters listening to this, right? Let me explain it to you again once. No, don't bother. Do you understand why I do it? Aye. Can we move on? Aye. Right, Producer John, what you got for us? No, Producer John, has, uh, he's got a question for us. Because you screwed up <laughs> with Kenny Miller the day, right? So to... To, to cover up the space in the show that's normally there, i.e., who are you? Because Kenny Miller's not here. John has got a wee quiz question for us. Right, okay. And is it the first person to get this right? Yes, it is. Come on in, John. Well, Grado wanted to play a game, so I've come up with the idea of Ewan versus Grado. Oh, how original. There we go. <laughs> Fuck up. Right. Go. <laughs> Today's question on Ewan versus Grado. This might catch on, you never know. Go. Right, okay. Who... Is the only club in Scotland to break the world transfer record? Go. The, the only club in Scotland to break the world transfer record? Yes. It wouldn't have been Rangers with Tor Andrew Flo, would it? No. No, that's what I'm saying. That's, I'm, is that, who's the. 12 million in 2000. There were, no, I, but there's no one else spent that. It must. There's obviously. It's obviously something daft. It's like a trick question. It's a daft thing. It's like fucking Clyde signing some cunt for forty nine pence, and it. Well, what are you thinking? So is it something like that? In it it's, could be. Uh, as in so, it, so there's a club in Scotland that has a world record. Oh, is it for the lowest amount? No, it's for the world record transfer fee paid to a player. Was it post war? No. Did I? Would we have watched? It was them? the post-war. No. Who was the twenties, mate? I don't care. If the twenties, <laughs> we talking nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties. Oh, yes. fucking Who's hell, the man. club that broke the world transfer record in the nineteen twenties in Scotland? Some uh, Dumbarton, Clyde, East Fife, no. Four Far, no. <laughs> Hearts, Hibs, Celtic, I'll Rangers, Fissel. Dundee, Fuck, Dundee United, oh, Josh Partick, Martin, Thistle, Rovers. Dunfermline, Albion Rovers. Third, third Lanark. Yeah, what the fuck? Cowden Beef. Clyde Bank. Well. Peter Head. Is, you're not allowed to Google it, Grado. Well, that no, defeats the competition. Ask my Imagine okay. asking us a question with the not, answer somebody in the nineteen twenties. I mean I mean some most I mean of all the questions you could have come up with, you come up with the worst question. even people listening right now are going, Why did you even bother with this? Uh, there'll be people out there that know. In fact, do you know what? I'll actually phone my dad, because he might know and I need to actually uh, see how the dog got on on Monday because she was getting uh, artificially in sem- what'd you get? artificially artificially inseminated. inseminated. The dog was uh, getting artificially uh, inseminated. Aye, my dad's going to start breeding dogs, so. Uh, <laughs> so that he was taking a dog to the vet to get artificially. No, no, the vet, no, the vet, some stud dog. <laughs> <laughs> so your dad took your dog to a stud. No, dog. my dog. It's his dog. Right, you need for your dad because I need to know what happened here. Right, okay, okay, he might know about this transfer anyway. Right. Hello. Hello. 
How did the dog, dog go on a Monday? I don't think it was up to it. What? So, what do you mean? Did, so, did, did it get pumped? Did Jeannie get... No, really. But then, uh, there's a thing called AI. AI, where they take sperm for the dog and insert it into Jeannie. So, that's what happened. So, when will you find out that she's pregnant? Three weeks. Sellers, three weeks of signs. What's the signs and symptoms? No, it's, there's nothing. It's just Morning sickness. Morning sickness, not that. Well, I, I don't know, but I can three weeks. It's four hundred fifty quid. It cost me to. Fuck. And how long did it take? I didn't watch them. I was never watching them. Peter says about fifteen minutes. <laughs> I didn't, that dug down the mount, uh, Jenny. <laughs> so. So you basically paid for nothing then? No, they just, uh, this woman came and she touched the, uh, can that dog, can the dog? Aye, to can I arouse it? Eh? To arouse it? Aye, and took the sperm for hat then, <laughs> then the fucking pot of tube in Jeannie. But I was, I really didn't want to, Peter's going, aye, 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 aye. But I don't know whether it works or no. Hmm. <laughs> Right, I've got right. There's another question, right? I'm on. I'm on this podcast, right? And they've asked a question, right? Where the question is, who there's a British, no, a, a, a Scottish football club, right? Broke the world transfer record for signing a football player, right? He's no and he's no gave us a decade. Can you think what that might have been like back in the fifties, sixties, or seventies? A world transfer record. Do you know what that would be? From Scotland. Aye. Chelsea, wasn't it? No, that's what uh, you said, Tony Andrew Flo. Oh, aye. No, but that wasn't a world transfer record because it was 12 million. Oh, that's, I mean, it's worldwide, this question is meant to be. Worldwide. Can oh, you I hang? Bet it's, uh, I bet it's him for Ronaldo from Man United, from Man United to where do you come? But, that, to, uh, but that's no Scottish. That's I know, Scottish. see, it's a, it's a trick question, isn't it? Well, it's not that tricky. Uh, right, I'm gonna have to Google it. Right, um, right, I'll, I'll phone you. I'll phone you later on. Right, I've I've actually lost the will to live with this quiz question. I know, man. It's I've, so bad. I, I bet the answer's rubbish as well. No, but that's shit. <laughs> Go and tell us what tell the answer us, is. He's <laughs> gonna fucking hate me for this. Falkirk. <laughs> what? In 1922, the, the world transfer records for the world, entire world for signing Sid Puddlefoot from West Ham. So for how much? I think it was £5,000. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Fucker would never do that in this penny. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? I know. Brilliant. Brilliant. Sidney Puddlefoot. <laughs> he would have scored goals for fun in the SPL. <laughs> It's the Football Dad Podcast with Ewan and Grado. It's now time for the big interview. And the big interview this week is with the former Celtic, Hearts. Who else was he like? St. Johnston. He uh, played with Lee. Uh, Standard played Lee. Slayage. Yeah. Uh, and he basically, mate, everywhere he's went, he was not everywhere he's went, he's, he's had grief half managers, if you look it up. Yeah, he uh, has. He has. Um, he's had so a hard time. And I think, it's, I think he's been hard done by. But at the end of the day, mate, he still scored for Celtic, his boyhood heroes. Against Barcelona. He did. Who can say they done that? Exactly. Well, I, I, I'm I, not part of this interview with Tony Watt because... We You're going to fucking Birds of a Feather. Yes, I had to. I interviewed Leslie... What's her name? Joseph. I'll interview Leslie Joseph. Do you know what? Actually, that's funny you say that. My mom and dad went to see Birds of a Feather live, right? In Blackpool years ago. And my dad went outside for a breath of fresh air. And Leslie was out having a fag. So I interviewed Leslie Joseph, <laughs> and I also interviewed Shakespeare's sister. And I thought that would be fine for the time that I arranged it for, but I didn't realise that Bulgaria time was two hours ahead of us. So we got our times mixed up. So I missed the interview with Tony Watt. Grado has done the interview. I don't, I have no idea how this went. Before we listen to it, how do you think you did as an interviewer? Actually, going to ask Leslie if she can remember seeing my feather in Blackpool outside. <laughs> <laughs> she was having a fag. Because you'd be delighted if you... He would, he would like that. 
How was your interview with Tony Law? Went really good because it was the first time. I was a wee bit shaky to start with. Cause I, I mean, you're the, you, you know what you're doing with your interview and all that. I'm still learning the, the you know, the way how to do the protocol and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it, it went well, mate. It went well. well we you're go- saying that. We'll let everyone else be well, a judge we'll, of aye, that. Well, we'll let the, aye, aye. So should we listen to it? Yep. Okay, here's Grado's interview with Tony Watt, <laughs> Piers Morgan, watch out. <laughs> Fuck up, you. <laughs> Please welcome to the Football Daft Podcast all the way from Bulgaria, where he's currently playing for CSKA Sofia. Before that, he played for Celtic, Hearts and St. Johnson, as well as a number of clubs down south. He's also got his own gaming YouTube channel. Please welcome to the Football Daft Podcast, Tony Watt. All right, mate. <laughs> so see how it says here you've got your own YouTube gaming channel. See how in the wrestling sometimes the ring announcers they go, he is a YouTube sensation, Grado, <laughs> and that, that does my nothing. What if, Why? What, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't like people being... probably know you mostly from the videos you've made Aye. on YouTube. I suppose Not that you're a YouTuber. Aye. So you are a YouTuber. No, I try and make videos. I just. See, when you're playing, you've got a lot of spare time, and it's quite fun to make videos, quite structured, do you know what I mean? And it's just to get your head away from football and get Aye. something, instead of just sitting doing stuff for no reason, it's maybe trying to look in the future. You see footballers like David Myler and other people who have done well out it, so you think, why can I not get a crack? I go for it, because, I mean, as as you say, you've got a lot of spare time, you're in Bulgaria, have you got pals? <laughs> My wife's here, <laughs> but we've is- got a few boys we go out for food in that way, but... Like their, their missus in that bit. Is that a struggle? Yeah. Mm? Is that a struggle being away from him? No, I don't mind it at all. Really? I, the way I look at it is, last year was good for me at St Johnston. Played a full year of football for the Aye. first time and I don't know how long. But it's not where I want to be and that's no disrespect for St Johnston. This is a massive club over here. Oh, 100%. Be, so going back to the point of do you miss it? No, I don't miss being home one bit because oh. like yourself, you'd move anywhere just to fulfil your dreams. And 100%. It's just the way it is, isn't it? What's what's the scoff like here then? Unbelievable. So cheap. I took my man down and I was like, do you know what? He's only over for a while. My man down for Coke Bridge would never (laughs) overpay anything. And I said, look, we're getting the best tonight. So I said, we'll get you a lobster tail. We'll get whatever. Now you're talking. I I think it came to like, between the four is one of the nicest restaurants in Sofia, between the four is they had beers, wines, everything. It was like 120 quid, 130 quid for the four. Mate, is there, any, is there any wrestling companies out there in Bulgaria? <laughs> I'll get you over here. I'll wrestle you every day and we'll put that on YouTube. You me. That sounds dynamite, mate. That sounds dynamite. So do you get ever, does players ever have a go at you and text you and go, get off that YouTube, do you ever get any grief off folk? No, no, you get slagged a wee bit, but last year I made sure that the day before a game I didn't stream and then Aye. I remember we played Rangers, Hearts, Celtic and we could beat three in a row. And to be fair, the stream was flying for a bit. I was getting good viewers. And that's what kind of killed me because I took two weeks off after the results. And then I just didn't have the motivation to go back because I kind of felt a bit embarrassed. The right. fact that if you, you weren't winning, it's... I know kind of the limits, do you know what I mean? It's not... No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's a bit like... You know, I, an old firm fan that, that, that stays off Facebook after a couple of days, you know what I mean? If you're a Rangers exactly. fan and you get beat off Celtic, man, I'm no touching Facebook for a good week. It's one oh, of the ones, isn't it? A hundred percent. And it's like, see if I was playing at Celtic, you couldn't do it because no. you, you would probably be flying doing it. But see if you even draw, see even at the weekend. Aye. At the weekend, see if, see for instance, if I had went and went out for a meal and had a few drinks after getting drawn with Inverness or something like that back in the day. And the manager found out about it, he'd be in his office. Slaughtered, wouldn't you? Just in public, just because... And that that's probably the best way to be, but it's just one of the things... I, I got a bit embarrassed when we got beat two or three in a row because I just didn't want that. I just didn't... I just couldn't deal with that. Mate, I, I've got a total respect for you for, for doing this YouTube stuff. I really, really do because, you know, you, I, I listen to the likes of like Roy Keane on on Sky, uh, on Sky Sports, who is quality, but, you know, he was keen pelters to the likes of uh, Lingard for calling him on Instagram or stuff like that. Then the end of the day, man, it's, we've moved on. It's, it's a different it's a different time in football. Social media is there to be used. I think it's cool that you do it, mate. I, I really, really do. And you need a career after football as well. You've got, say I've got five, six, maybe eight years max. I would do what I do. Would do what I do. And maybe, maybe, it, the way I think it is, 
it'll maybe teach me to speak better Aye. because not everybody understands me. <laughs> it'll maybe make me more confident in front of a camera. Aye. It interacts with people, so you give a wee bit back, and it passes your day. Mate. If you're sitting bored, it passes your day, so there's a lot of reasons why you do it. 100% because you get these guys that, in FITBA that, that give up and then they, they go and get jobs on the radio and Sky and I think that must be an offer. You know, it's, it's a good wee scoop to, to, to get, to get that opportunity. You don't have an interest to go into management and no. coaching or anything. And there's, there's, that's why the biggest fear for me was, remember a couple of years ago you see a lot of people going bankrupt and you see a lot of people after football and you think, how can they be on that money aye. and go? And lose it. And, and I think to myself, you grow up, normal life normal you want to give your family everybody the best life possible so you think why not try and plan ahead why not and try and get a step ahead everybody and try and it might help to go into the media and the radio like you said an offer you can't refuse and not need to coach but it opens every door and you try and better yourself at everything you do and it's kind of challenging to try and grow it because you see some videos and i put a couple up and they got like thirty thousand views and i put a couple up and they got like one thousand views and you're like well I'm not happy with that one thousand. Okay. I want to better that. Aye, aye. Do you know aye, what I mean? And it's all driving yourself on. But people, see, people laugh. What what hurt is that to me? Exactly. What? So let's go back to the, the the start of your career. So was it you started off at LG and then and then you, did you get signed for Celtic as a boy? No, I started off in the youth team at Elgin and then I played two or three months with the first team. Jimmy Boyle found me at the youth team. Got me into the first team and then Celtic put a bid in and bought me for about 100 grand. Were you a Celtic fan growing up? Aye, growing up, aye. Man, I went we... to Marvel games when I was younger because my mum didn't, my mum and dad didn't let me wear a Celtic top in old firm days. Didn't let me go to Celtic games because they kind of knew about the old firm rivalry and thought that was... Aye, they didn't want you involved in that. Aye, protect me a bit. So my uncle was a Marvel fan, so he took me to games. He got free tickets off one of the boys that worked there. So I stayed with him on a Friday night, went to the games on a Saturday and then... As I got older, I went to Celtic games, grew up a Celtic fan, like yourself, you're a Rangers fan, aren't you? Aye. You grow up, uh, but you kind of... It must have been, I just can't imagine the feeling of playing at LJ and then getting an offer to play for oh. the team that, that, that you supported as a boy. I mean, it must stun out to be one of the best moments of your life when that happens, That man. was, that was, especially at Airdrie, I was on, I think I was, Topics. I think I started off 30 quid a week and then Not 20 I mean. quid appearance, and then it ended up, the wrangled that in the girl. I think I've made two appearances one week and it ended up 70 quid, so they changed it just to straight 50. <laughs> she had 20 quid, so I ended up going to Celtic on a normal wage, but people would get maybe four, five, six hundred quid, whatever. Do you know what I mean, a good wage. I'm all this wage. A 17-year-old boy, do you know what I mean, which is, for a Coke Bridge boy, that's, I felt like, Aye. I felt like a millionaire, do you know what I mean? And then I played, I think I played a year and ended up training with the first team and it was one of them, like, when you went up and trained with the first team, one mistake and you were like, oh no, his eyes are looking at me, or he's doing this, you're embar You kind of felt as if you embarrassed yourself, you were only doing well. What kind of players so, was that? Was I like Bruni and all that? Were they, who was the I, intimidating but, ones? I'd probably went up the first couple of times and trained when they were on like, a recovery day. Right. So it would be like your bros ex, your, I think Chad Uri was there, people oh. maybe weren't playing... All the time, and then you'd have your odd guy like Samaras or Stokes, whoever never started at the weekend. And but it was like who on that that caught my eye. I always thought I want to be like him. Right. Do you know what I mean? I always thought. And then you do well at a training session. I think we'd, I think we'd done a few times like tournaments, and I ended up scoring the most goals or whatever, or top joint whatever. And I ended up training with the first team a couple of times, and then I went back to the youth team, and I got sent off in a youth cup semi final. Aye. But I scored two and assisted one, and we got through, and I missed the final. And Lennon find me a week's wages, whatever. Honestly, I had one of the best games, but I sent off for the scent and then celebrating somebody's face. So it was just stupid. So they put me in. It was like, went for the highest to the lowest. And then I, it was like, ah, you'll get fined a week's wages, but you come to train with me for a week. I'm keeping my eye on you. Mm. So I was like, ah. but I never took it as a positive. I, I was crap myself. It was as if I like, don't fall out of line. And then I, it was an opportunity. Monday and I made my debut on the Sunday. So it kind of worked out well. Do you know what I mean? It was as if everyone kind of felt the place. So was... you get sent off, and then as a punishment, you go to train with the first team, and then you That's ended up I mean. getting a debut. And then did you know score two goals or something like that when you come uh, off the I bench? Two my debut, but man, I, think, that is I think my performances before the sending off were kind of pushing towards the first team. But right. I never took it as a 
I asked, I took it as a, if I get a ball away once here, he's chucking me inside, making an example of me. Aye. Which, nowadays you probably don't get that. I know it was only maybe eight, nine years ago, but honestly it was like, if you trained with reserves, you were buzzing. If you trained with the first team, you were in dreamland, but you were also, you were walking about scared, mm -hmm. not looking at MD. If you gave, made a mistake, was you were just... Was it a good pressure? Did you like that sort of pressure, or was it? Did, I, it, did it biff you, or you know, what, what kind of? How did you feel at that time? I, I think, I think the older you get, the more you worry about football. The more you Aye. don't. Do you know what I mean? The more pressure you put on yourself. See, when I was younger, I just thought I wasn't the hardest work, and I was quite lazy. But it was just my style of play. I wasn't, I wasn't not lazy. I was like maybe stand up front, don't chase things, but when the ball comes, make sure I score. Aye. Make sure I do something. Whereas now, I won't stop running, but I'll maybe come back and defend too much or press too much and not be in the right positions where you need to kind of mix that. But when I was younger, it was as if, like, nothing phased me. It's... Everyone was in the back of the net. Do you know what I mean? And that's where the last couple of years after an injury, kind of, I'm getting back to that working, but nothing's phasing me. Do you know mm. what I mean? See how you see how you said you you, you get you get um, pulled up for the like so your your training and stuff like that was that was that Lennon that was having a go at you for for no it was more media Lennon said right. to me one time on the bus I scored two against Inverness and he said I don't care how you train don't care what you do as, as long, long as you're in a game you do that Aye. and I was like fair play like I was just I went I wouldn't the word lazy was probably wrong to say I'd probably just probably confident in terms of. Instead of coming back and defending, I know that other boys will get the ball to me and I'll make sure by putting it in the net, they won't worry about my defensive aye, stuff. Aye. Do you know what I mean? You're, aye, you're proving them by, by scoring their goals. Aye, aye. I just, it was just one of them that it kind of all worked out. And I, everybody says, oh, why didn't you make it here? Why didn't you do that? I enjoyed my time there. It was more than enough and I moved on. That was it. It was, obviously you wanted to play for your boyhood club for 15, 20 years, but I probably wouldn't have played there for 15, 20 years because every year they sign in somebody, a marquee striker. Correct. Look at Edward, look at Morelos, look at mm -hmm. these players. So they're going to sign in somebody like that and look how good they are. Aye. But even if they're not good, your Pookies and your Baldies came in and they made sure they played. Mm -hmm. So I was always going to be number two, three, four or five, do you know what I mean? And Fine by me, I moved on to a big club and that's the way it is. Because at that age, you want to play as many games as possible, wouldn't you? You don't want to be sitting in your hoop all oh. the time. And do you know, know what? I could have probably been patient and you look back and you go, I could maybe have sat there and took Aye. the money. I could maybe have done this. I could have maybe... But then I think, what good is it? If Aye. you've got patience, okay, it might work out. But when you're young, you're ready to go. You just want to do everything. You want to play. You, just, you want to play. That's mm -hmm. it. And you earn more playing. But I don't know. I don't regret it. I don't. Honestly, I don't. I, hand on heart, I don't regret it. So see here, what I want to talk to you about, Tony, is obviously... A lot of folk will remember you for the, 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 the goal against Barcelona. Um, do you think that was a bit of a burden on your career? Having I, wouldn't that? I wouldn't change it. But right. That's cool. I, you wouldn't you change it. But do you know what I mean by that? Do you feel as no, if you, you scored that goal, do you think that folk went, right, he's the next Larson, you know, he's the next, you know, whatever. And It's a burden in terms of Celtic fans' eyes towards me because aye. it makes me into a player that, I probably wasn't there, do you mm. know what I mean? But I never played after it. I think I started maybe three or four games after it. I never, the next game I scored against St Johnston, then I started two or three games with half an, not half an injury, I'm not, I, had a, I get took off against St Johnston or else I got injured against St Johnston, I can't remember what it was. And I played a couple of games after that and then I never really featured after that much. And then it is what it is, what can you, mm -hmm. what can you do? I wouldn't change it because You've scored against Barca. For the rest of, rest of my days at the club I love. That's mm -hmm. it. Ticked a box and that's me out of there. And Aye. That's just the way you need to look at it. How were you received in the, in the dressing room? So see the likes of the night you scored against Barcelona. What's the dressing room like? Is everybody coming up to you? And Everybody's buzzing because I've done it, but everybody's buzzing with everybody else because that was probably the most I've ever seen people put their bodies in the line. No. So everybody... i I probably done less than everybody else because I only played 20 minutes, but I put the ball away, like you said. Every, like, like I said earlier... You don't defend, you don't do this, because when it comes to you, you make sure you put it away or you Correct. make sure you do your bit. And everybody done their bit that night. And I just got lucky. And yeah. I'll be remembered for the rest of my life at a club I love. And I wouldn't take it back because 
there was no other way I was going to go in the history books of Celtic other than doing that. Aye. And that's the truth. No, that's that's brilliant. That's brilliant. So, so you played with Celtic. How was your time at Hearts? Did you enjoy that? I I enjoyed it. I wasn't like I said, it was after an injury, after a transfer embargo. I wasn't hundred percent. I wasn't hundred percent fit and I didn't play up front. I played in behind a striker. But right. they kept singing my name, everyone was good. I never scored a lot of goals. I think I scored one goal. But I think we were maybe third in the league, maybe fourth in the league when I left. And at times we were second, at times we were third. We've done all right, but you look at the Hearts team now, they're maybe struggling. Struggling. We had a much better team, 100%. Aye, there was a lot of good players when you played at, at, at that time, weren't there? Callum Patterson. Aye. Uh, John Shooter was still there. Don Cowie, who was linked with Rangers at the time. Aye. Uh, Who's the boy that went down south that played with, Heart, that played with Hearts? Jamie Fingway. We see there Walker. at the time. Jamie he's Walker, we see now. there. He's back now, Aye. but he was there. He was probably our main man. Aye. Uh, Sam Nicholson, he's went away and had a good career in America, so we had a good team. It mm. was just, it just wasn't the right move for me. The, the time see if it came a year earlier, I'd Aye. have been a hundred times better. Or if it came out maybe two years later, not a year later, because I still wasn't. Did they ever give you grief at Hearts because you played with Celtic? Because there is that old rivalry. It's kind of no. like the Rangers and Aberdeen the Celtic rivalry. Fans gave me grief. The Hearts right. fans, the Celtic the... fans gave me grief. Call me a traitor. Call me a ah. Judas and that. Whenever we played against them first game of the season, but Hearts fans were brilliant with me. They they sang my name. They were always positive. They were always on there. They were always behind me. And I, honestly, every time I played there, I felt that's maybe the one where I think I never performed to the level I could have. In terms of is that a wee bit of regret there? The time at Hearts. Not not regret. No regret but... I was asked to play behind the striker. I was asked to play kind of more a deeper role, and that's probably just not me. I done it, but. It's probably not me, and I try not to regret anything because I've not done anything too bad in football. Whereas that I've let everybody down. Do you know what I mean? I could maybe uh, perform better here. I could maybe uh, perform better there. But that's just the way football is. Sometimes right. your confidence goes. Sometimes injuries happen. Sometimes you're just not you. So FIFA or Pro Evo? This year, I've always said Pro Evo's get a better gameplay but FIFA is just so much more advanced so probably FIFA so what is it about this year because even all my mates are saying this this new game is unreal the way it what, is this what, year what do you prefer right well see the thing is mate right I get I, I don't I've no, I don't pr play Pro Evo right it's always FIFA because my mates have got it and I must admit mate I play it for two weeks and then I put it down every year I buy it and I like it for two weeks and then I fucking is there any game you play constantly mate is there any I, I mean, I, I must admit, I don't. I remember I queued up one night in Tesco for the new Call, call of Duty, right? Mm -hmm. Queued up, waited at midnight, bought it Call of Duty, stuck it on about 20 past midnight. I sold it to my mate by quarter past one. I went, I can't fucking do this, man. What am I doing? I'd love to be able to play the games and all that, right? But I mean, I'm going to kind of. See, when I was young, right? I used to play. International superstar soccer on the N64, yeah. man, right? And my, one of my pals at the time was a bud, right? We were about nine or ten. And I, she came round to my bit, man, and she hammered me like three two, man. So I chucked it out, chucked it off the wall. I couldn't take it, right? So I'm the kind of I'm, yeah. I'm the I'm the kind of geek that used to fucking play play player one versus player two. But you know, yeah. player two was invincible. I was just playing against myself to try and score. I'm not shite at, at, at playing games. Yeah, I'm just no, no a gamer at all, mate. I'm just no a gamer at all. I'd like to be able to find something to sit and watch because Tony, I don't have a good attention span, mate. I, I can't watch box sets. I can't play games. All I do is watch wrestling, mate. <laughs> uh, do you know what? I don't. I don't. I don't have a problem with that because I. I used to be the same. I. I love watching. It. I love watching wrestling. See if it wasn't for the timings. If it was like midnight and stuff, because of football, I probably would have watched it more. Did you watch yeah. it when you were young, eh? I loved WCW, that was mine. You did not, did you? You loved watched it. WCW, who was your favourite in WCW? Goldberg, uh, Sting, NWO. Sting. Dun, dun, dun. Sting, I liked NWO, Big Kevin Nash. Oh, big sexy Kevin Nash. Big Kevin Nash, he... I, I preferred Hulk Hogan before NWO just because I used to watch like the 1980s, like was it 80s? When was WrestleMania like the first couple out? Was it 80s That was or like 70s? 83, 84, but you know, what Hulkamania really got big about 88, would you say? 88 and early, early I like, 90s. I didn't like Hulk Hogan on WCW when, when he, he went black. When he went kind of Hollywood arse. Hulk Hogan. 
Aye. Are you doing it like that? No. I fucking love that, mate. I watch that back all the time. Have you got the WWE Network? I think I've actually got it signed up somewhere, taking the direct debit out, but I bought it. (laughs) That's what I did, mate. That's what I did. I watched one documentary and then I watched, have you seen the Jake Snake documentary? Love it, love it, love it. Jake Snake Roberts one. That is emotional. See, see the bit at the end with DDP and Scott Hall and they all they all link up right at the end, man. Yeah. I was in tears, man. One of the only times a tear has came out my eye watching something. Aye, aye. Do you know, Honestly. Jake, Jake the Snake Roberts was one of the first ever guys to train me in a post office in East Kilbride. Shut up. Aye, Jake the Snake we, Roberts lived here uh, late nineties to the early two thousands because he had a wee, he had a bird there here, and uh, he he got sent back to America for fucking believe it or no, uh, no treating his snake right. He ended up starving it to death. Did you not know that? He, sta- he starved his <laughs> mate. He starved his snake to death, so he got yeah. chucked out of Britain. But mate, yeah, sure. no, I swear to God, yeah. and he, he takes. Do you, know, do you know I can believe that because seeing the documentary, the way he is, the well, way he, he acts. He's just a liability, mm-hmm. but he's not a bad guy. No. He's a nice guy. No, you can tell DDP is a legend for that bit. Do you know what? I'm choking to get a hold of DDP, see if he can sort me out, mate. Oh, man, I'll join you. <laughs> get him in Bulgaria with your And then I, because then, who is it? The one of the, was it the Lies manager that said something about you're, you're, phys- you're, you're no physically good enough. Fucking, we'll get it. We'll go down to DDPs, mate, and then we'll Aye, come back to him and see what he says now. <laughs> I'll get DDP when he's doing a plank. I'll get him to put the foot in the back. <laughs> nah, but so some of your managers that you played for through the, through the years, they've criticised you for your behaviour and and the way you carry on and out. How, how would you respond to them now? I'd probably say. Get up, Maybe the, the first... <laughs> I'd probably say you can go and take a... F- <laughs> a <bit of laughs> and throw it clean at the moon, but other than that, no, no. I, I think maybe the first six months, like I explained, first year into the first team, I probably didn't realise that you need to add the defensive stuff. The game was going that way. What are you away, though, Tony? Hmm? What are you away, though? No, not, not Celtic, definitely not, because nah. you couldn't be, you couldn't be Lennon cheek. But then, when you left Celtic, did you have your chest out and were, and were you a bit like, fine, I fucking no. played with Celtic? Well, obviously, the these problems down. you have at, at Celtic, like the kind of, not power, not struggles or that, but like, everybody's against you. When I went to Belgium, straight away, the manager never signed me, so straight away he was on me, and then I thought, I'm not putting up with this. I'm no. not coming here for you to just have a go at me every single day. I'm going to stand my ground. Well, in a respectful way, I would never go for the mark, but... It kind of got a bit out of hand, then that guy kept killing me in the press, killing me in the press, killing me in the press. And then, what, while you played with him? He was, he was slaughtering you in the aye, press? And I was still playing because he needed to stay out of the allegation zone, and we were flying, I was flying, and he kept playing me, but the game didn't need to play me, put me on the bench, and then we'd maybe lose two in a row and be back in the relegation fight, and then he'd play me. Do you so, know what I mean? And sounds like cock. It was. <laughs> a big one. But just, just in terms of that that's probably the only bad press you get and then it stays we it's like muck sticks in it and then mm. after that nobody's really kind of came out and said Dyla said it when i left celtic but that was just to cover his own back he he pulled me before it and said your attitude's been brilliant your work rate's been amazing you've really showed me what you can do all the best if you need to come back and train at any time winters whatever you can come you're welcome and then the next day in the press there was a knife in my back I was like, you're, ah, joking. So. you're joking you're joking so he said that to you and then the next day he slaughtered you ah he said that and then I've said that before but I was a bit like that a bit taken aback because I was thinking we've left on good terms why would you come out and I say that me? but it is what it is isn't it what can you do and I don't hold any grudges anymore just let them be I kind of knew out after that, I probably wouldn't have succeeded long term at Celtic, but that's the way it is, isn't it? Now you see Lennon. If Lennon ever had a problem, he'd pull me in. And Lennon sounds Celtic. like Lennon sounds like a decent manager, man. Any, any Celtic players you talk to, they've always had. I've never heard a bad word about Lennon, like a player. Nobody ever, you know. I, I had my ups and downs with him at right. times. Like I wanted to play, I was impatient. They probably get annoyed at me. I was probably the one who wanted to punch in the face because. <laughs> Because I, I was just impatient, but when you look back at it, the job he's done and the job he's doing again, you can't fault it. Jackie's the right man for the job. It's selling it now. In the whole picture, I had 
I actually I do, do think he is as well. A lot, of, a lot of Rangers fans said, "Oh, yeah, beauty man, Lennon's here for like," and I thought to myself, "Not nah, man, he's telling you, he's a bit like." I wouldn't say he goes. Could would I go as far as to say he's a bit like a Walter? Maybe you know I know, but it's just because he's a he's a Celtic legend and I, he knows his score. He's he knows safe, what's requested. He's a safe man. I know he's, he's safe. He's safe. Aye, he's a he's a safe bit, but. I think a lot of a lot of football fans are naive towards Len. They don't realise how good an actual but manager he to is. To combat that, I think Gerard's the right man for Rangers' job. As well, well, so they are. So they are. I think but I think Gerard's appointment has been brilliant. And Celtic fans maybe say, "Well, he's won nothing and and such and such." But the difference, you think, a couple of years ago, you know, we were playing, we were drawing with fucking three uh, years ago. Would you have predicted Rangers to win it in the next five years? Absolutely. Exactly. Not. You know what I mean? No, but last minute goals, Morelos in Europe. I think Stevie. G has done a great job at Rangers. I think there's still plenty more to come. The only thing I'm worried about now is he gets too good, and uh, I don't think he'll jump ship anytime soon. I think, no, I think, I think he's. I think too, he's here for for a long while. I think he's here until Klopp chucks it. I think he's too. And this isn't calling him. I'm pro, I'm not going to say arrogant because that's not the right word. But I think he's too. Pride himself. Too driven Aye. to walk away without a trophy. Aye. I do. He's got to do it. So, um, Tony, old boy, we're going to be wrapping this up soon. I just want to, so you, how long have you been in Bulgaria for, mate? Just since the summer. I've signed three years. Can you see uh, it? In, can you see it in Bulgarian? Like, Kaxi, Dobre, uh, that means how are you? And then when they reply, Dobre, T, and then I say Dobre, and then that's about it. Doberdine means, <laughs> that's a bit dodgy sounding, by the way, but Doberdine means good day. <laughs> Doberdine? <laughs> Aye, so if I'm reading it, it's a good day, but in my head I'll know what it means. <laughs> That's brilliant. How do you cope with managers when they're getting out their team talks and they're talking fucking... Did he date in We've Bulgaria? We've got a coach and he, he tries to speak English and his English is broken, but he tries and it's Aye. actually decent, but it's, it's probably the... It's probably the best broken English I've heard, but <laughs> it's so funny, do you know what I mean? But when he talks, you listen. It makes a lot of sense. Not, if not, they translate for you. Aye, uh, so that's so it's not an issue. You don't. You're not sitting there. No, going, not an issue at all. They're, they're quite, they're quite good at that. So what's next for Tony Watt, mate? What do you think? Are you going to be? If you get any more goals in football, or double this season, and then hopefully, I want to see out the three years here because I've moved about too much. Uh, they told me be patient, so I've started only a few games, but I've got four goals and a, an assist, a solitary assist. Try there, so, try there. I need to hit double figures this year. Uh, you, need to hit, you need double figures, your YouTube subscribers and all, don't you? What are you on exactly, the Exactly, I need to get to 10,000. <laughs> are you going um, to make a bit of, if you don't mind me asking, will you make a bit of dough with that eventually, if you get up? If it does well, I, I just want to do it and get a bit of entertainment. And if it takes off, it takes off. And if it doesn't, I'm still having fun doing it. Do you mate, know what I, mean? I, think you're, I, think, I think it's a great idea, mate. And I think once you eventually retire for it, but you've got something there where you can go to, you know, talking on the radio or stuff like that. And and as you say, mate, you'll get the experience of that being on YouTube and having your game uh, channel. And it's, it's about great, that consistency mate. and a structure, like you say. It's just... I'll need to get you on for my first one, actually. Mate, but, like, get me if on. I to, if I need to start a series or a... I think where you could do one every two weeks or three weeks, then it'd probably take off. But it's just getting the ideas of what to do while you're in football because you don't want to be going about interviewing people and then people mm -hmm. are like, what's he doing? He should be concentrating on football. There's Aye. a line I can take it to the now that you can maybe pass when you're retired. Aye. Do you know what I mean? Aye, there is a fine line where folk are going to go, right, he's spending too much time on that fucking computer. Down, I guess, aye, aye, aye. But I think, mate, mate, I think you should just keep going with it, man. Bam up your players. Bulgarian players get them to speak Scottish. Do you know what I mean? Play uh, play computer games with them, noise them try up. Try Bulgarian food. There's so many. Aye, food mate. Try Bulgarian food. But it's just about doing them. He's, let's see. You know what I mean? I would watch Tony Watts five fucking play five best bits of scoff in Bulgaria. I I tune in to see that. I would, uh, but, would, but then I'm the kind of guy that, that watches. Idea. I'm the kind of guy that watches landings and takeoffs at fucking Presswick Airport. I'm a I'm a pure. I'm into I'm into planes and all that, mate. I like watching yeah. cockpit videos. Cock that doesn't sound right. I like watching <laughs> cockpit videos. I like watching dragons den videos. I, I'm a mate. I, I, I mate. I don't know about if it's you, but I can be, you know, I'll start at 11 o'clock at night on YouTube and just oh, find I'm myself sick. gone. At next minute, it's three o'clock in the morning and I'm watching how fucking chewing gum's made. Do you know what I mean? I, I started watching 
the best 10, it was episode 1, episode 10, street food vendors. Like what for that, mate? Icons, munchies it was, so go and watch that. It's munchies? Right, it's I'm not called that. Munchies, the channel, and then it's the top 10 episodes of street vendors. It's like icons in New York or whatever, or places. Unbelievable. Let me tell you, let me tell you one. I can't remember. It's, a, it's something called Al Mahanda Kitchen, right? And it's this guy out in the woods in America, right? And it's all today with sound. Do you ever, there's a name for this? No, no. We're listening to sounds of how things have chopped. ASM, right? And it's amazing, right? It's so relaxing, like this cunt's out in the woods in Texas and he's making like chili and he just denoise him chopping up the onions. <laughs> and then shh, shh, putting it in the fran and. <laughs> <laughs> but all the noises, mate, it's amazing. I could be sitting there for hours just watching this guy in Texas just like making fucking um, like ribs and uh, macaroni, obviously. And mate, get yourself onto that and tell me what you think about it. I'll get watching that. You'll need to send me that. I will, You'll mate. You'll need to send me a link to that. Right, mate. Well, honestly, how do you, how do you think I've got on, going on um, interviewing somebody without you going? Smooth, there was no marbles in the mouth. Usually, when I'm trying to interview somebody, I've got marbles in the mouth trying to talk. Mate, it felt like a pure nice conversation. It was just smooth, wasn't it? I felt as if I've made pals with you. Tony, my man, it's been amazing talking to you, mate. If, as I said before, that was a really good interview. It was good to... I'm sure the fans back in Scotland will be uh, choking to know what you're getting up to over there, and it's good to see that you're uh, sitting on the computer all day. <laughs> Training for an hour playing PlayStation <laughs> for nine. Brilliant. <laughs> Coffee for two. <laughs> mate, the business. Put on, mate. You're the man, yeah, pal, right? on Twitter. <laughs> Aye, let's uh, follow each other. Catch you later, Tony, my man. It's now time for our Beer 52 Match of the Week. Over to you, Grado. Well, congratulations to Rangers supporter Barry Aitken, who correctly guessed the 5-0 result in the Rangers and Aberdeen match to win a case of beer. This weekend, there'll be 52 Match of the Week as Aberdeen versus Tough Hibs. game. It's a tough game, guys. So to win all you need to do is guess the correct score before midday and Saturday. Everybody that gets the correct score will get into a draw to win the beer and you can enter by commenting on the Football Daft Facebook page or tweet your score to at Football Daft Pod with the hashtag free beer. Winners must be 18 over and stay in the UK. Uh, what do you think? Hibs, man. What do you think? Two teams that are really struggling but they, they, they really need a win. Well, you say that. After that result, for Hibs against well, Hearts. actually, you're right. They, they knocked out Kilmarnock at the cup. They then draw with Celtic. Mm. Have they turned a wee corner, have Hibs? What did you think of Heckenbottom getting the red card for kicking the bottle? That was funny. It was, was, it was it? funny. It yeah. was, it? I don't think he deserved a red card. No, it was stupid. It kind of reminded me a bit of it. Like, Remember when Lenny did it up at Inverness? So he did. Years ago. Ah, yes, right. Did he get sent off for that? I don't, I don't think, think he did, no. He did, no, no. So what do you think then? <laughs> Aberdeen <laughs> Hibs at, um, at um, Pitodry. Mm. Tough one, isn't it? That's a, that's a hard one. That's going to be a really interesting game to, to, to look ahead to. Um, God. None each. Are you laughing at? None each. Yeah. After all that, <laughs> none each. All that. Well, yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. But that's, that's going, just that's what happens, isn't it? That's <laughs> what happens, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. None, none each. <laughs> I mean, come on. So, Gray is going for nil-nil. And uh, if you would like some free beer from Beer52, all you need to do is go to beer52.com forward slash dab, and we can sort out eight beers if you just cover the cost of the postage, which is £4.95. So that's all you need to do. We'll send you a case of beer. And as an added bonus for Football Daft listeners, you can get two extra free beers. So that's a total of 10 free beers all for just covering the postage, which is £4.95. Your first box will be sent to you the next day and will contain beer from all over... Europe. And Beer52 don't hold you to ransom, so you can leave at any time you like. So just go to beer52.com forward slash... Daft. To get your first case of 10 beers for free. That's beer52.com forward slash... Daft. That's it for the Football Daft Podcast for this week. Next week, it's the one and only Kenny Miller will be here. It's fingers Miller crossed. time, fingers it's crossed. Miller time next week on the show. Should have been here this week, but Grado let me down. He let producer John down. He let Kenny Miller down. And more importantly, let you down, the people who listen, who support this show. So Grado's now going to apologise again. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, we would love to hear from you. And we'd love to hear your reviews. We'd love to read your reviews. We'd love to hear what you think of the show. We'd like to... Get your reviews on the Apple Podcast. So if you listen to us on the Apple Podcast, send us in your reviews because what we're going to do 
This week, the five funniest reviews will get a pair of tickets to the Rangers versus Liverpool Legends match, which is taking place at Ibrox on the 12th of October. So go to Apple Podcasts, find Football Daft, and leave a review, and we'll take the five funniest, and we'll send you a pair of tickets for Rangers versus Liverpool Legends game at uh, Ibrox on the 12th of October. Who's going to be there, Grey Dog? That's, that's actually good, because uh, Quell's going to be there, Moles. You've got Stevie G. Surely he's going to pull in the blue, man, for one game. Jamie Carragher, fucking Patrick Berger. Tickets are on sale now for the Rangers Ticket Centre, or by calling 0871 702 1972, with all profits going towards the Liverpool and Rangers Foundations. So all you need to do if you want to win a pair of tickets his big game at Ibrox on the 12th of October is leave a review on Apple Podcast and we'll pick out the funny the five funniest and we'll send you a pair of tickets and here's an example of what we mean here's a couple of reviews from the Apple Podcast what you got Grado? Uh, uh, we have a uh, review from Ewan's Hairline <laughs> who says top banter quality podcast I love tuning in every week to listen to you to be fannies much better than watching Fanny's own porn hub. <laughs> no one star reviews this week, but Mun2006 has reviewed us and he says uh, that he does have an issue. He enjoys the podcast, but my one problem is that Grado's impression of Duncan Bannatyne from Dragon's Den sounds like Sylvester Stallone. So it's a criticism of your impression. From hey, if I put my money into your business and I want some equity, how do they get my money back? You tell me now. I'll tell you what some of my money. He's got these two words that you probably don't want to hear. I'm out. I think that's good. Is Sylvester so Stallone? Let me some. You want some of my money? <laughs> <laughs> you want me being rocky? And what am I going to get money back wise? Well, is that what you. I've read the script. I've seen who else is starring in it. I'm out. <laughs> So if you want to get some tickets for the Rangers uh, Rangers Liverpool Legends game, then go and leave us a wee review on the Apple Podcast. And um, uh, you've got until midday on Tuesday, the 8th of October, to do so. Uh, the very best of luck to you. Uh, we're back next week with Kenny Miller, as I said. Have a great week. Grado. What? You've been daft. You've been football. It's yourself. What the rock is cooking. Remember that?